What if Guillaume became a demon? Would he succumb to darkness? Or will his unwavering resolve and faith in humanity lead him back to the path of becoming a demon slayer? Well, the biggest change will be that Shinobu wouldn't even be alive. And here's how. Exploring the dynamics, it is clear that the only reason Guillaume would give up his humanity would be because he lost all his faith in the kindness of human nature. Guillaume has always been a kind and gentle soul, despite his imposing appearance. He always maintained compassion and goodwill towards others. So what could even lead him to throw away his humanity? The main occurrence that turned Guillaume's life upside down was the temple incident. Eight of his adoptive children were killed due to the fact that one of them betrayed the others and helped a demon infiltrate the temple. Some of them died because they didn't listen to Guillaume's orders and tried to escape the temple. Guillaume believed that his frail stature and blindness fueled the distrust that children had in his ability to protect them. This was enough to drive Guillaume to madness, but what happened after this was far worse than mental torture. Sayo, the youngest, had listened to his orders and hid behind him. He was determined to protect her at all costs and fought against the demon mercilessly. This was also when he realized that he had a frightening amount of power. He was able to hold off the demon till morning, when sunlight erased the demon and other people soon arrived at the scene of the incident. So what exactly happened that changed him so much? Well, due to a misunderstanding with Seo saying, that man is a monster. Everyone, he killed everyone. The villagers thought she meant Guillaume and not the demon. Because of this, Guillaume was imprisoned and charged with the murder of the eight children, ultimately making it the reason why Guillaume loses his confidence in mankind. In the original timeline, Kagaya Ubuyashiki would have intervened and released him from prison, restoring his faith and leading him to the path of becoming a demon slayer. But let's say this didn't happen in this scenario, but rather the one who appears is Muzan. After hearing that, there is an individual with such a frightening amount of strength to handle a demon with his fists alone, Muzan sets out to recruit him into his ranks. Now, will Guillaume simply accept his offer? Considering that Guillaume would already be at the rock bottom and his execution date would be really close, he will possibly take Muzan's proposal and become a demon. In the aftermath, what changes do you think will take place in the story? The first biggest change will naturally be that Kane and Shinobu wouldn't even be alive. If you remember the event that took the life of Shinobu's family, you will know that Guillaume was the one who saved them at the very last moment. Without his presence, this time, both Kane and Shinobu will lose their lives in this process. This will further lead to even more changes in the story. What do you think they could be? Well, starting off with Kanao. Without Kane and Shinobu, she wouldn't have been adopted rather than that. She might still be living a life of abuse and torture. Furthermore, her first appearance and impact on the story was during the Mount Naragumo arc when she saved Zenitsu. So this time, without her showing up, Zenitsu would probably lose his life here. The rest of the events will be produced the same way till the Entertainment District arc. Even without Zenitsu's presence, the gang will still be able to handle the demons in the Mugen Train arc. But the real issue will arrive in the Entertainment district arc. What do you think will happen without Zenitsu being present in Tanjiro's squad in this battle? Well, to begin with, it will take them much longer to find the demons, as Zenitsu was the reason they even came across Daki. And after they do come across them, the scenario will be completely different. Tengen will probably face Gyutaro alone this time, while Tanjiro and Inosuke will face Daki. In consequence, while Tanjiro and Inosuke will be able to still handle Daki, Tengen will lose his life in this process. The tide will be turned in seconds as Giyutaro will come to help Daki after taking care of Tengen and his wives. This will leave Tanjiro and Inosuke cornered and in a very tight situation. Now the story could proceed in two different scenarios. What are those, you ask? The first one is that if Obanai arrives on time, then there is a chance Tanjiro, Inosuke, and Nezuko might still live this through. The battle will recommence between Obanai and Giyutaro, while Tanjiro, Nezuko, and Inosuke will face Daki. Considering that Jutaro was already weakened, Obanai would have an advantage over him. On the other hand, Tanjiro will be able to unlock his Demon Slayer mark while facing Daki. This will enable them to simultaneously behead Daki and Gyutaro, putting an end to the Upper Moon duo. Though if he doesn't arrive on time, let's just say it won't be as fortunate for them. But for the sake of the plot, let's go with the scenario where Obanai does arrive on time 
time to save them. Throughout these years, how do you think Guillaume would have developed as a demon? Well, his personality would have taken a 180. To start with, he won't be a kind person anymore. Although despite consuming tons of humans, he would still have a rule to never hurt the children. Kind of like Akaza, who never hurts women. So just how strong will he be? As a human, he was strong enough to handle Upper Moon 4 to 6 alone, but he had his Nichiren Mace and Stone Breathing style to support him. Now as a demon, the matters will be different as he won't have the exact same weapon and abilities. What he could do is he could probably develop a blood demon art related to the stone breathing technique. This would allow him to even change the landscapes or feel vibrations through his terrain to fight his opponents. If he desires, he could also get a mace either man-made or made from his own flesh like that of Kokushibos. All of this means he will be far stronger than he ever was as a human. Increased speed, regeneration, and strength will lead him to become a demon of upper moon caliber in no time at all. Now the real issue is, what rank will he be placed in? To analyze thoughtfully, I would place him at upper moon 4, where he and Akaza would be always fighting each other for the upper moon 3 spot. Sometimes he would have it, while most of the time Akaza would hold it. He isn't at 2, because I think Doma's unsympathetic nature is something he can't overcome. While Kokushibo, of course, has significantly more experience than Guillaume ever had. Maybe after a century or so, this ranking could change. But right now, I am going with these rankings. Coming after, what other changes will take place? The Swordsmith Village arc will proceed the same way with Gyoko and Hantengu losing their lives and Nezuko overcoming the sun. This means the Infinity Castle arc will also proceed in the same way. But here is when Demon Demon Guillaume will actually get some action. Demon Slayers, who have lost an important part of their forces in this timeline, will face more difficulties this time. At the outset, Guillaume, who doesn't have any rivals in the Demon Slayers, will be moving around the Infinity Castle, freely helping other demons in their battles. Doma, who was supposed to face Shinobu and Kanao, will be facing Inosuke alone this time. Inosuke will be easily overwhelmed, as Doma will be taking his time having fun toying with Inosuke before he kills him off. Kokushiba will be facing Sanami, Muchiro, and Genya. Without Guillaume, Sanemi, Genya, and Muchiro will just be stepping stones for Kokushibo. Even if they are able to unlock Demon Slayer Mark and Transparent World, they won't be getting close to beheading Kokushibo. He will simply take care of them one by one and move on. This is already a difficult situation for the Demon Slayer Corps. On top of that, they have lost the majority of their forces. Now, how will the rest of the events proceed? Kaigaku, who is supposed to face Zenitsu, will be taking on other minor demon slayers. Akaza will still be handled by Tanjiro and Giyu. And Nakime will also still be taken under control by Yushiro with the help of Obanai and Mitsuri. This will turn the tide of the battle, but only for a short moment before Muzan enters the battle. Thus, the only forces remaining on the demon slayer side will be Tanjiro, Giyu, Mitsuri, Obanai, and some of the remaining lower-ranked fighters. Without Shinobu's help, Tamayo would also not be able to develop an anti-Kibutsuji drug. Hence, they won't have any means to take care of the progenitor of the demons. This will be a hopeless battle for the demon slayers. At the end of the day, they will have to wait for their demise at the hands of the demons. Giyome wouldn't get a chance to involve himself in any major battles. But from what we can see, if he isn't on the side of demon slayers, the outcome just completely flips around. Around. His presence was really significant, as without him, Demon Slayers already lost major personnel ahead of the final battle. Now, here's an interesting take on the story that will probably change Guillaume's fate. You all remember Sayo, right? The last remaining child from the temple that was saved by Guillaume, and also the one who caused all the misunderstanding. What if Guillaume came across her during his life as a demon? This would probably happen before the Infinity Castle arc, when Sayo would have grown up to become a teen. Guillaume will most likely encounter her during his hunt for food during the night. He will be fueled by anger, seeing Sayo living a normal life while his life is turned upside down because of her. Sayo will notice that it's Guillaume and start apologizing to him. It looked like 
like the weight of guilt rested heavily upon Sayo's shoulders, burdening her soul with the memory of Gyome's wrongful arrest. She longed for the opportunity to seek forgiveness and offer her heartfelt apology to the one who had selflessly protected her. So how will Gyome react to this? Shocked by her reaction, he will initially loathe her for doing what she did. But once he realizes that she is being honest, he will start reflecting on his choices. He will most likely let her live and go back to his hideout, where he will ponder his thoughts as to what he shall do now. Even if a little part of his humanity is restored, he will think about betraying the demons. Therefore, if he does meet Sayo in the Infinity Castle arc, he could betray the demons and help the demon slayers in their resistance. Though this resistance will be short-lived as without the presence of Shinobu, the path to winning this fight will be near impossible to achieve. Not to mention, Muzan could just use the demon manipulation technique to know that Guillaume was going to betray them and take care of him right away. In short, all of this will be useless, and human extinction will be absolute. That's it for the what if theory of Guillaume becoming a demon. But before you go, why not check out the 30 mistakes in one piece that you didn't know about? What are you waiting for? Click it.